So in this video, we're going to be talking about the French and Indian War, mostly because when we're looking at the American Revolution, we're looking at a unified 13 colonies. So we have to look at, well, how do they even become unified? So let's look at the war and then let's kind of look at the effect and how it leads to that. So first we have to kind of, how, how do we lead to war? So we have an expansion happening. If you're looking at the colonies from the beginning of colonization and the all the Europeans coming over into this North American continent, it's just vastly growing and growing and growing and growing. And so they need somewhere to go. We all know that crowded cities are not great. So they started to expand into the Ohio Valley, past the Appalachian Mountains, really taking some of that land that is just, well, according to the white colonists, free. And nobody's living there, but there are those that are living there. Most specifically, the indigenous tribes. Um, there's a few scuffles, you know, some things. But basically, the biggest conflict starts to arise with another European power that wants to be able to have that land and the use of that land, and that's the French. So you have specifically looking west into that valley. They're looking for more land. They're really pushing past those Appalachian Mountains. More specifically, so they're starting to look at these states. We have uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. And it also that there is Kentucky involved and also specifically Virginia involved. Of course, the British are not the only ones in the colonies at this time. You have the French, the Spanish, even though the Spanish are further west, but they do have claims to some southern parts of the East Coast claims. And it is the French that really start to kind of make some conflict with the British colonists. So the French are mostly there for fur trade as they are settled mostly above St. Lawrence River and above the Great Lakes over in Quebec. And but they wanted this Ohio Valley because it was fur trading. Plus, they really did have business with the indigenous tribes in fur trading with them. And fur trading was extremely lucrative to the French, especially in Quebec and to their new France. Um, and so the French claimed occupied territory was just cradling next to what the British claimed occupied territory was. And because now the British colonists are trying to move west into this French claimed land, they start to have debates on who really has this kind of military control over it. The colonists, the British colonists are building forts. The French have forts. Fort Duquesne is the one that really becomes the, the pinpoint. So this is where the conflict arrives. A young George Washington, a Virginian, gets a bunch of his Virginians together and says, let's go down to that Fort Duquesne and let's tell the French how it is. It's our land. Right. Well, this militia was not very successful. Did you know that? Did you know George Washington totally started the French Indian War? What? Yeah, because that is what caused this whole thing. So all you needed is a single spark, some sort of conflict between the French and the, and the British colonists, because that's all you need, right? Something that just kind of takes all this little energy and just all of it together. George Washington and his men completely unsuccessful. At Fort Duquesne, they were able to, after open fire and after going against each other, they basically scared the colonists away. Well, the British can't stand for that. It doesn't matter that they're the ones that started it. They do want that land and they do want control over it. So now they declare war against the French. The French declare war against them. So now they all of a sudden are going to once and for all try to decide who has the European claim over all of this land. Because yes, that's what they're going to claim. So right now you have this indigenous tribes that are really just stuck in the middle. They are really trying to decide, do we go into this fight? Do we stay out of this fight? Who which side do we join? And even though they do decide in the most case to yes, fight for these European powers to figure out who has control, they are gonna to try to align themselves with who is going to number one, promise them to leave them alone and be at their best interest. Isn't that what any power is gonna to wanna to do? They're going to wanna to side with who is going to bring, who they think is gonna win and who they think is gonna bring them the best promises at the end of the, the conflict. So you do have kind of two sides of this Native American indigenous involvement. You have some tribes that do decide to go in with the British American colonists, and that is mostly because um, they really do see the British American colonists as being the ones to kind of create that alliance with, and the Iroquois do really side more with their particular predicament. And even though they fought, it was more of 
It was a loose involvement. It was more of a neutral, but we'll help you out kind of involvement. But one particularly stands out, the Chief of Mohawks, uh, Joseph Brandt, um, as his English name, pictured here. He does become a colonel on the side of the British military and fighting for them in the French Indian War. These indigenous people, the chiefs, really do gain a name for themselves in regards to their military style, their tactics, and what strengths they lent to each side. You do have those on the other side that wanted to side with the French, mostly because these are tribes that had huge agreements and trades with the French fur traders, and they wanted to protect that. And they also really didn't like how many of the British colonists, because the French, they were there for the fur trade. They weren't there for land. They were there for the economic side. So they sided with the French because of those agreements. You know, you, fur trade, it's open for that. They helped them. They tracked them with them. But these French settlers didn't demand their land. So they sided with the French in hoping that if the French were to win, they would be able to preserve their their livelihood, their land that, you know, ancestral land that they were on. And some had already been chased west because of the British colonists. So they were hoping that once and for all, they can stop the movement west by these British colonists and preserve their territory that they had. And they were hoping the French could bring it to them. So it brings on a seven years war. We're not going to go into all the logistics here. But basically, it was fought here. There was parts in Europe. And all of this is over land. Who controls the land? So there's a lot of strengths that the British had, but mostly because the British were sending military already, they had sheer numbers. So the French didn't have as much military presence there, so they were able to fight, even though many of the people who fought um, on the side of the British were colonists that didn't have any military background. But what really strikes is this is where a lot of our leaders rise to prominence. You have George Washington, yes, that scampy little guy who wanted to go against Fort Duquesne, actually becomes a huge, like, hero. There are stories where George Washington would, in battle, be shot from, um, have his horse shot from beneath him multiple times. And he would just get right back up on another horse and he would just keep on riding. Who doesn't love stories like that? You had many generals, many colonels, many majors. I mean, just all military ranks, all in all, that were just gaining notoriety, gaining heroship and really prominence. And so the French in any war trained many of the uh, colonists how to fight. And this is what gave them military experience. That is important. Well, it also was really important in unifying. So before this, we have our 13 colonies, but we say that like they're unified, like they're this 13 colonies, these unified uh, settlements of the British. No, you had the Virginia colony, you had the North and South Car Carolinas, two separate colonies, you had the Georgia colony, you had basically you get the point they were not unified they were 13 individual colonial entities all with their little mini governments specifically they did have representatives already formed as i've told in previous videos and here's ben franklin saying this is proof that we need to be a unified force we need to be together. We need to work together. We need to have a central government and we need to be able to basically protect ourselves together. So this flag is actually a political cartoon that was driven, that was drawn by Benjamin Franklin, very wrongly attributed to the, French, the Revolutionary War, actually came during this time in the, in the French and Indian War. It was a political cartoon of illustrating Benjamin Franklin's idea of how to in order to create a survival of the colonists and create a, a long lasting presence and stability amongst the colonists, they needed to work as a unified entity rather than 13 separate entities. So this join or die all comes down to what we call the Albany plan. And so the Albany plan in 1754, right in the midst of all of this, you have delegates from almost all, almost all 13 colonies. And they met in New York and they wanted to, they drew up this whole draft of creating what can this colonial government do? What was their purpose and everything, creating that all of the 13 eventual colonies are going to create their own little colonial constitutions, but that they would continue, but have representatives. They would not only have their uh, colonial assemblies, which are elected representatives locally, but that they would have a more unified, centralized representative government. So he wanted some unification working together and to be unified. 
Well, it had to be approved by not only the colonial assemblies, but also the British Parliament, because they were under the control of the British Parliament. And unfortunately, it didn't pass. And that was because not all 13 states agreed. The biggest complaints against it was they felt that if they worked unified, they would all become targets. If one colony became a target, all of them would become targets. They didn't want to have their financial means wrapped together. Do you see this whole idea of these individual states wanting to remain with their state? Um, so they wanted to make sure that this really didn't happen in a way that would, if something affected one colony, it affected all the colonies. And of course, the British Parliament felt they already had representative governments in each of their colonies, so why did they need more? So Benjamin Franklin once stated, the union of the colonies is absolutely necessary for the preservation, hence the join or die idea. Um, he felt that these conflicts with the Native Americans, the indigenous people, and the conflicts with the other European powers was definitely a reason to show them that they needed to be unified to work together. Well, the war ends, and so does the new France, because who won? The British! So basically, after the Battle of Quebec, the British captured it, downfall with the French. Just didn't work out. So there were some treaties that needed to be formed. And basically, when a treaty needs to be formed, you need to divvy up the spoils. So one of the biggest effects was that basically France was pushed further north into Quebec, and they got a lot of that territory. That was the French territory that was west of the Appalachian Mountains. So when we're looking here, so one of the biggest things is you had the French now, they got pushed north uh, into Quebec, and you had the British colonies now expanding to encompass what was occupied by the French. So now the British colonies are not just right along that coast. Now they basically, with this treaty of, with Paris, treaty of Paris, I mean, how many treaties of Paris are there? You have all the way down here, the line of the Mississippi River now being the further west border of the British colonial land claims. I can say claims, don't I? So it basically had to be that now what do we do with this land? This is, this is the biggest effect that came out of the French and Indian War, a whole bunch of land that they really did want in the first place. But now how do they settle it? Well, the first thing that really starts to get the boil of the American colonists, because now, guys, they're working together. Even though the Albany plan of the Union didn't work, the colonists are calling themselves American. So now these American colonists, the Americans, are really wanting to spread out. They, that's what they wanted to do before the French and Indian War. And so now they want to. But the British are like, you can't be little, little colonists. You started this whole war. You're the ones that made it happen. And you're the ones that put us in to debt because a war is not free and a seven years of it seven years of it 20 years it's not free it put britain in a lot of debt and they're like you're gonna have to pay for this guys and we're gonna talk about what the british do number one start really angering up those american colonists and two start trying to get them to pay for this scampy little war that the little George Washington Open Virginia decided to start. So let's take a look again at this change in land. So as we see, we have, of course, the British colonies specifically over in the East Coast before the uh, 1754, before the British, um, the French and Indian War. And then after the Treaty of Paris of 1763, we see now this huge territory that is now being more occupied by the British colonists, or now calling themselves Americans. Really, when we start talking about the big things that make the colonists angry, this line right here, the Appalachians, the Appalachian Mountains, becomes a big territorial kind of border that the British put some restrictions on. So check it out in the next videos as we look at the proclamation of 1763, the taxes that are imposed on the colonies to help pay this beautiful debt that they incurred, and basically how that further unifies these American colonies and the American spirit. So that's in the next video.